All right, guys, welcome back to The Shack, and tonight we're going to be discussing CNC's. And as many of you know, I have a CNC that I use to do jobs for people. I use it a lot in my day-to-day -day activities, but I also have other CNC's that I use for testing and just trying them out and trying to get a feel for them for you guys to come up with some good information to help you make a decision on which machine is best for you. Up until recently, there were three main brand uh, machines and size machines that I felt like were the best pick for somebody just getting into it that's just wanting to get a machine that can do CNC stuff without breaking the bank. These machines typically are around a $1,000 uh, entry point, so that's a little easier for somebody to get into than, say, $3,500 to $4,000 for some of the you know more... Uh, prosumer versions of the machines. Well, tonight we're going to talk about one of those brands that I really do like that has kind of took a step in the right direction and very well may be the best pick in my opinion at this point. So <laughs> let's check it out. All right, guys, so to start off with, just to kind of lay the predicate here, uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight is starter machines, which most of us will gravitate to in the early days of CNC, -ing. especially those of us that don't have the money to go out and buy the more expensive, uh, top-of-the-line considered machines that are on the market. So typically what you're going to end up with is something in the 400 by 400 footprint range and typically it's going to have a dc powered small spindle anywhere from 200 i've seen them up to like six to eight hundred uh watt spindles like this little guy this is typically what you're going to run into or smaller and a lot of times they're much smaller now there are upgrades most machines offer a 65 millimeter uh sleeve that you can use to attach something like this. This is a trim router. This one just happens to be from Carbide 3D, but there's a lot of companies out there that make these, uh, and there's some companies out there that make them not necessarily for C, uh, CNC's, kind of like Makita, the DeWalt, which is a 69 millimeter, but same basic principle. Uh, but these task-built uh, routers usually come with an ER11 collet as well as a lot longer power cable so that you can hook it up to a four foot by four foot CNC. Now, the downside to these is they're loud. Uh, a lot of the, the ones that are on the market, not necessarily the one from Carbide, but some of the other ones on the market, uh, the dial that you adjust the speed has a tendency to move while you're using it. So there's a few things that these, while they work better than the smaller DC spindles, there are some cons. And the noise being the biggest one, that I hear the most complaints about. Now, with the little DC spindles, these guys are really, really quiet. Uh, a lot of them, depending on you know who makes them and, and how precisely they're made, they can be very uh, usable for thin materials. If you're doing like small quarter inch, eighth inch materials, or you're doing uh, acrylics some plastics, uh, these, these can be very effective, especially when running eighth inch bits. But once you get above an eighth inch bit, these don't really have the horsepower to do a whole lot past that point. Now, typically with the smaller machines that most of us are going to begin with, that is going to be where you're going to go. You're either going to have the DC spindle that comes with the machine, or you're going to opt for a router. The third option, which most people do not want to do, unless you happen to be an electronic engineer or you have a really good knack for electrical things, is that you could get yourself a 65 millimeter VFD. You could get the controller, all the cabling, you could put that stuff together and you could make your own spindle. Uh, my friend James over at James Dean Design, he did just that. And there's a video where he did that. And I'll drop it down below so you guys can go check that out. But it is a very, uh, technical procedure. It takes a lot of time, it takes money, and a good bit of know-how to be able to pull that off. Well, Fox Alien felt our pain, and they have created a drop-in spindle kit that has a VFD controller. 
It is completely controlled by the machine or you can control it with the knob. And they're marketing it and selling it for their machines. So as long as you have a 65 millimeter spindle sleeve for your machine, you can connect this to any Fox Alien machine and even some that aren't made by Fox Alien if you got the right connector. So we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna walk you around, show you what the thing looks like, the connectivity and stuff on it. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a lot of the technical stuff, but we're gonna touch on a few of the things. Again, my buddy James Dean over at James Dean Design, he's done a review of this machine. He's checked lots of the technical stuff. So we're not gonna recreate that. All right, so walking around the machine, guys, as you can tell, it's beefy. It is very much bigger than the original spindle that came on this machine. This is the stock spindle for the Masuda 3S. Uh, and you can see it's much bigger, much more robust. Uh, the Z-axis on the Masuda 3 is strong for a machine of this size. And it's doing a really good job of handling it. I was a little concerned that the added weight and the, the size of the spindle, the power of the spindle, might give the Masuda a run for its money, but so far it's worked really well. I will say the hardest part of this install is gonna be your drag chains. Now, hats off to Fox Alien. When they built this machine, they did oversize the drag chains enough that you don't have to swap the drag chains. You will have to possibly take them loose or you can just snap the drag chains loose from here, uh, get in there, pop the little gates open and run them. I was able to do mine without taking the drag chains loose. Probably not the easiest way to do it, but that's what I did. But you've got this wire that comes from the top of the spindle and goes over through the drag chains and then through this coiled up group of wires here. Uh, this was a little <laughs> challenging, putting this wrap back on there, but it wasn't that bad. So once you've got this sleeve bolted to these four screws here into the Z axis, then you've just got these two strap screws here that tightens up and grabs a hold to the spindle and holds it in place. So that, the physical mounting of it is really, really simple. Now, as far as the VFD controller, and I'm gonna turn everything on so you guys can see what it looks like. It's gonna be a little noisier but not too bad. That'll give you an idea of what the thing sounds like anyway. So as you can see, everything illuminates. You will have to plug in this little cable right here where it says laser, and you're gonna to wanna to switch this switch over to laser. There's also some settings that need to be changed on the controller of the machine. And read the book before powering any of this up to make sure that you do those steps. Uh, because you could damage the setup if you don't set it up properly and run it the way it needs to be. So the controller is basic. You've got power here. Uh, you've got the PWM wire here that goes over there to the laser output. And then this is the output that goes to the spindle by way of the drag chain. So setup was simple. Here you have the PWM control and knob control, which are options that you can have the machine control it or you can control it with this knob. I'm gonna roll the knob to the left here, switch it over to knob control, just to give you guys an idea of the noise, of the sound level of the spindle. There we are at about 50%. Then I'm gonna get over here closer. And we're at about 50% output right there as far as the speed goes. I'm gonna go ahead and spin her on around. So there you go. That is full output to the spindle. And it's really nowhere near as loud as let's say a router is. So spin it back down and all the way down to zero. So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna go back to PWM control, and I'm just gonna, I don't know that it matters, but I'm gonna put this back to full, just in case uh, it needs to be. Uh, it also does have a readout here that tells you uh, the RPMs of the machine. James did a little testing on that. He said that, you know, take it with a grain of salt, the accuracy 
according to his instrumentation, was not that great. But I don't have those instruments, so we're not going to go into that. But there you go. Very basic setup, guys. Like I said, one wire goes over here to the controller on the laser output. Got to make sure you switch the switch over. Uh, then you've got wall power, spindle output, and that's the PWM wire that goes to the front. So it's very simple. Like I said, that drag chain and that cable there is going to be the hardest part of the whole operation. But does it not make this machine... I mean, this machine just looks wicked and awesome with its own here, and it does a really good job. So let's talk about how it did in my testing today. All right, so to test this machine, I went ahead and went into the deep end, guys. I went ahead and grabbed some oak. I didn't play around with any plywoods, acrylics, or anything like that. Uh, I am accustomed to running uh, my Shapoko 5 Pro, which has a 1500 watt spindle. So I was pretty comfortable in the fact that most of my bit settings, my speeds and feeds would be within reason of what this machine could do. What I ended up doing was I grabbed some oak that I had left over and started playing around. Did this little job right here. This is just one of the Vectric files that's in there by default. A little scrap piece of wood I had left over the other day uh, from a job I was working on. Knocked that out. Did a really good job. Did a little bit of tweaking to my speeds. Uh, not a lot because, like I said, it was very similar to the speeds that I use on the Shapoko. I did have to speed it down just a little bit because I was using a variety of different bits that I don't normally use a lot. Uh, but we got over and I decided, you know what, my buddy James over at James Dean, he, he did a 3D engrave with the spindle and it looked great. So I was like, you know, he set the bar now, so I've got to go for it. So I decided to do the alligator that everybody does and did a, a really good job with this spindle. And guys, I did not have to do a lot of sanding with this. I was really impressed. Now I did run a 132nd, I believe it is the tip, uh, a, a tapered ball nose bit. And I ran some pretty generous step over. So it took a little while to get this done. But the objective of this project was to get it done without having to spend a whole lot of time sanding because on the alligator's back down through there, that's some places that I didn't want to be trying to sit here and sand. And so I felt like sacrificing a little bit of time on the job, getting the job done by doing a little extra uh, overlap on the, the, the job would pay off dividends when it came time to sand and do the finishing. And so it turned out really nice. I like it. So did the job with it. Uh, like I said, even the parts of the water here, I was expecting to be some witness lines because I haven't trammed the machine. I haven't done anything to it. I, I literally bolted this thing on there uh, and fired it up and went to working with it. But it turned out awesome. And the speeds and feeds were really cool. All right, so you don't want to hear me talk the whole time, so we're going to be putting a little bit of video together of the machine running and actually doing work while we discuss where I think this lands and why I think this is a machine that you should look at uh, if you're getting into CNC's. Well, first of all, this machine currently is around a thousand dollars. It's like nine hundred and ninety something dollars for the Masuda 3S in this configuration, minus the spindle upgrade, of course. So even with the smaller spindle, it's not a terrible machine. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't run quarter inch bits on it because I felt like the spindle was a little underpowered for that. But you could do a lot of the same work with smaller bits and a little less uh, speeds and feeds. But with it being thousand bucks, this is something I see somebody being able to get into the machine, uh, get started, learn the software, learn the machine, do some jobs, save up your money, you know, get ready to do some upgrades. Uh, Fox Alien is one of those companies that they offer lots of different upgrades. Uh, they offer uh, extensions to where you can take this machine, start out with it, and as you grow, you can actually grow the machine and make it bigger. Uh, this machine does have closed loop steppers, which is something that you don't see a whole lot. Even my Shapoko 5 Pro doesn't have closed loop steppers. So that's a big upgrade for a 
beginner CNC in my opinion. That's another option is to be able to extend this machine and add this spindle to it would give you a machine that would be comparable to most two foot by four foot machines on the market because you're gonna have closed loop steppers, 1.5 kW spindle, and then you would have the work area comparable to a two foot by four foot machine if you did the extension. So that's a that's a pretty big deal and it's the way that it's set up, you could actually purchase the base machine and expand upon it that way. So I think this is definitely a machine worth looking at. It's with this spindle guys, it is doing a really good job. I'm, I'm actually really impressed, uh, kind of shocked uh, with the performance of the machine. I really was not expecting this little guy to be able to do some of the stuff that it's doing. All right, there's not a whole lot else for me to say about this thing, guys. Uh, when you do, if you do get this machine or you do get this spindle for whatever machine, make sure you read this and follow these directions really well. Like I said, there's a couple of settings in the console that you're going to need to change on your machine before powering it up and trying to use it. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on that. This wasn't necessarily a setup video. Like I said, my buddy James down below, I'll put a link to his video. If you do get it and you want to go set it up, then uh, you can go watch his video and he'll walk you through all the steps that you need to know about. But there you have it, guys. Another great addition from Fox Alien. And uh, wow, it works great. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.